Hello friends and welcome back. My name is Rachel Croffitt. I am the Children's Director here at Bethel Assembly of God and I am bringing you week three of our new unit which is called Faith Fails. So we started off the unit talking about Abraham uh, and how he failed not just once but twice and his fail was lying about his wife. Then, last week in week two, we talked about Sarah, who laughed um, when she found out that she was going to have a baby, and then lied about laughing. So this week we are going to talk about Samson. So maybe you've heard of him before, um, but before we get into the story, I want to go over our memory verse for this unit. So like I said, if by the end of the unit you can send me a little recording, uh, have your mom or dad record you saying the memory verse, I will send you a little prize. So let's go over the memory verse here. I'll hold it up for you. You can see. It says, The Lord takes good care of all those who fall. He lifts up all those who feel helpless. And this is found in Psalms 145, 14. So last week I gave you the idea of writing the memory verse out on cards and spreading them out and scrambling them up and, and putting them back in order. This week, um, find a ball of some sort and you and maybe you have a sibling that you could do this with or mom or dad or aunt or uncle or whoever you're with and toss it back and forth, or if there's a couple of you around a circle, and each time you catch the ball, you say one of the words. So I would catch it and say the, and then I would throw it to somebody else, and they would say Lord, and then to the next person, takes. So each person would say a word of the memory verse. So do that a couple of times and see how fast you can go, and of course try not to drop the ball in between. So that'll give you a little practice with our memory verse this week. So as I said, we're going to be talking about Samson, so let's get right into it. And we've been talking about fails, right? We talked about fail videos. Well, there's somebody famous in history you, you might not think failed. So when you think of Thomas Edison, have you ever heard that name, Thomas Edison? What comes to mind? Well, for most people, without a doubt, they will think, he was one of the most important inventors in American history, and he is most famous for creating this, the light bulb. But not only did he create the light bulb, but he also created the record player and motion pictures, a technology that would ultimately lead to the film and making technology we carry on our smartphones. So even though they may not have been responsible for things like smartphones, the technology that they created so long ago are things that we're still using now. So in a very roundabout way, you could say it's because of Thomas Edison that we now have the ability to film and enjoy fail videos. And as much as we admire Thomas Edison today, there were times in his life when he looked like a miserable failure. If anyone knew about fails, it was Thomas Edison. He was a school dropout at an early age. As an adult, he was a failure in many, many jobs, largely because he spent all of his time on the job doing experiments. Edison had many, many failed experiments throughout his career as an inventor. In fact, it is said that he failed more than 10,000 times while he was trying to perfect the light bulb. So it took him 10,000 times until he came up with the actual correct way to make the light bulb work. So when asked about his repeated failures, Edison is supposed to have said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Isn't that a good way of putting a good perspective on when we fail? So yeah, we didn't get it right that time, but we found a way that doesn't work and we can cross it off our list and try another way. 
Well, here's another quote by Edison I'd like to share with you. Edison once said, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. In other words, there are many people who were just on the verge of success. One more try, one more do-over, and they would have made it, but they gave up too soon. There are many stories in the music world about musicians who gave up and quit the band only to see their former bandmates become hugely successful just a few weeks or a few months later. The same could be said for would-be authors or actors, athletes, and many, many other careers. The same can also be said about Christians. Failure can be discouraging. When we repeatedly sin and we repeatedly find ourselves asking for forgiveness, we can find ourselves wondering if the pursuit of godliness is even worth it. So what if God forgives us this time? We're just going to mess up again. Why even bother trying anymore? Of all the fails in the Bible, none were more spectacular than that of Samson. Samson was the mightiest warrior in the Old Testament, a man who didn't need a sword or a spear or any kind of weapon to waste, to lay waste to his enemies. He was a hero to the Israelites at a time when Israel needed one. But as Samson's fame grew, so did his ego. And do you know what I mean when I say ego? Sometimes when someone gets really, really good at something, they get what someone might say, a big head. They feel like, oh, well, I'm never going to fail. I can do anything. And they kind of get, you know, a little self-absorbent, a little too, you know, braggy maybe even is the word. So as Samson's fame grew, so did his ego. He forgot that God had given him the strength to fight God's enemies, and it led to a truly epic fail. So if you have your Bibles with, we, with you, we're going to read in Judges. So this is also in the Old Testament. Let me get it up here. So it goes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua and Judges. And we're going to go to chapter 16. So Judges 16, and we're going to start at verse 4. So we're going to read 4 through 22. So if you'd like to follow along. So sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to Delilah and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him, so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistine brought her, Delilah, seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him up with them. With the men hidden in the room, she called to Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. So Samson said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. Then, with the men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the, Philist the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off as his arms, as if they were just threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. 
tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened them with a pin. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said. Because I have been a Nazarite, dedicated to God from my mother's womb, if my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistine, Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him. And his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. Say they set him to grinding grain in the prison, but the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. So the first part of the story, we see that Delilah has been convinced by these Philistines that it, if they will give her money, if she finds out how to remove Samson's strength. Because you have to understand, Samson could take them down just like that. He didn't even need spears or weapons. He was that strong. So finally, Delilah nagged him and nagged him, and he finally told her the truth about how to get rid of his strength. And what did she do? She betrayed him. So let's find out what happened after. So Samson was captured by the Philistines. They gouged out his eyes so he can't see. Um, and they put him into prison and they're making him grind grain. So let's make it up here. So you're going to go a little further down in chapter 16, and we will start at verse 25. So starting Judges 16, verse 25. So while they were in high spirits, they shouted, bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of Philistine were there, and on the roof there were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, Remember me, please God, strengthen me just once more, and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistine for my two eyes. Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple, on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died 
than while he lived. So Samson believed all along that he was invincible. He thought nothing could bring him down. When Samson was born, his mother made a vow before God that he would never cut his hair. Samson broke that vow when he allowed Delilah to give him a haircut, or really told her the secret, and she betrayed him. It cost him his freedom, his strength, and his eyesight. No one had a greater fall from grace than Samson, but Delilah's betrayal was not the end of his story. Samson's hair started growing back while he was in prison, and so did his faith. Then, when the moment was right, Samson asked God to give him his strength back just one more time. Samson used that strength to bring a whole building down on the Philistines. Samson died, but he died with his enemies, striking a huge victory for Israel and finding redemption in his final moments. Samson shows us that no matter what we've done, no matter how bad we've messed up, God can still redeem us. How many of you are hard on yourself when you mess something up? Maybe it's missing a question on your spelling test. Maybe it's missing a jump shot in a basketball game. Maybe it's talking back to your mom or dad. Whatever it is, we are often our own worst critics. We beat ourselves up over our mistakes long after the people we hurt, intentionally or not, have forgotten about them and have forgiven us. It only gets worse if you're repeating the same mistakes over and over. The more you fail, the more you fall short, the more tempting it is to give up. But that's exactly the moment we most need to forgive ourselves and ask forgiveness of others. We can learn from the past. We can try again one more time. Like Thomas Edison said, you don't want to be the one who gives up right before right on the verge of being successful. God will always give us second chances. We learn that from the stories of Abraham and from Sarah. Samson's story shows us that God will always redeem us no matter how far we've fallen and no matter how badly we think we have messed up. The Bible is full of redemption stories. So is the history of the church. God can take thieves and murderers, scoundrels, crooked politicians, tax collectors, anyone he chose, and redeem them. I don't think there's anyone here who has fall into those categories as a thief or a murderer or a scoundrel. So we don't fall into any of those really bad categories. So if God's willing to redeem failures like that, how much more will he redeem children your age? Never give up trying to do what's right. Never give up on trying to lead a righteous, sinless life. We are all sinners. We all fall short of God's glory. We all fail every day. The challenge to us is to keep on trying, keep asking for forgiveness, keep striving to do better every time. And God always makes up the difference. God redeems Samson, and God can redeem anyone. God still loves us when we fail, and he will never, ever quit on us, no matter what we have done. So let's close with a simple prayer and thank God for his awesome forgiveness. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to gather and, and to learn more about your Bible and, and about your forgiveness, Lord. And we're so thankful that the forgiveness that we see in the Bible and the redemption that we see in the Bible is available to us each and every day. We simply just have to ask. Lord, I pray with you that you would be with each and every person watching this video right now, that they would know that they have your forgiveness and your redemption, and all they have to do is ask, Lord. I ask you to be with each and every one of them right now. In your name of Jesus, amen. All right, so as usual, I like to find out what you learned about what we just read. So I have a couple of review questions, and this one, they are multiple choice this week. 
So what you're going to do is you are going to make the sign for the letter that you think it is. So if you've ever done sign language before, you know you make a fist with your thumb on the side, and this is A. This, hold your four fingers up, your thumb comes in. This is B. And then C is pretty easy because it looks like a C. It looks, might look backward to you, but. So we have A, B, and C. So I'm gonna give you the question. You're gonna fill in the blank with either A, B, or C, and whatever one you think it is, you're gonna hold that letter up with your hand, okay? So the first question is, Samson's strength came from blank. Did it come from A, working out, B, God, or C, the water he drank? So tell me which one you think it is. Good. You should be holding up B, because God gave Samson his strength. All right, the next question. Samson revealed the secret of his strength to blank. Was it A, his mother, B, his brother, or C, Delilah? So who did he reveal his secret to? All right, you should be holding up C, Delilah. All right, question three. Samson lost his strength when Delilah blank, when she... A, cut his hair, B, tied him up, or C, told the Philistines where to find him. So you should be answering A, Samson lost his strength when Delilah cut his hair. Question number four. After Samson failed, he blank. A, was blinded, B, went to prison or C, both A and B. So after Samson failed, what happened? Your answer should be C. He was blinded and he went to prison. All right, last question. When Samson asked for a second chance, God blank. Did he A, God didn't hear him, B, gave Samson his strength one more time, or C, turned him down. You got it. B, he gave Samson his strength one more time. Good job. So I hope you learned a little bit more about Samson. Maybe you've heard of him before, but didn't really take on the perspective of how he failed and was redeemed. So this week, if you want to have some more win videos to take advantage of, um, I remembered a game that we played back at Christmas one time. And what you do is you can take a bowl of, they can be little round candies, they can be little Nerf balls or whatever you have around your house. And what you do is you set up some different size containers and you try to throw the balls or candy or whatever you have into the containers. And based on how big or small the container is, is how many points it's worth. So I'll show you a little picture. We did this with our elf at Christmas time. So I'll hold that up there so you can see. So like the big blue bowl was worth five points because that was the biggest and easiest one to get into. Um, the blue and white speckled container was worth 10 points because that was a little harder. The pitcher was worth 20 because that was just a little bit harder. And then there's this vase over on the side that was worth 50 because the hole is really small and tried hard, harder to get it in there. And you can see we use these little red candies. They were just little red ball candies. But you probably have some jelly beans left over from Easter or um, just some whatever's laying around the house that you could use. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, but I thought that would be a fun win video or win game that you could play. And you can, of course, challenge your mom or your dad or your brother and sister um, and have some fun with it. Um, another one for those of you who like to be a little crafty, you could make a Samson puppet. 
So you can use different materials if you have some old socks, and of course ask mom or dad before you get any of the socks out and start doing crafts on them, but find an old sock, or if you have a brown paper bag, you can use that, and you can decorate it. So I have an example of one that we did um, in missionettes one time. So we used socks, and you can see we have a sock here. We put some googly eyes on it, and we used yarn for hair. So you'll want to give Samson some, some nice long hair, because like I said, he hadn't cut his hair his whole life. And we just had some scrap fabric that we used to make clothes with. But basically, then you can put your hand in there, and you can put on a little play all about Samson. There you go. So that gives you kind of one more active thing and one crafty thing that you can have fun with this week. If you have any questions or you want to send me a picture or something, feel free. Uh, you can send it to my email, kids at BethelCarlisle.com, or your parents can find me on Facebook. Um, I would love to hear from you, uh, and I hope all of you are doing well. I have been praying for you. So if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. I will see you next week for week four of Faith Fails. God bless.